Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome a guest that has lived in Portland area his entire life, yet his work has expanded way beyond the walls of Oregon and into collaborative work with some big names. But how? How did this entrepreneur who has lived in Oregon their entire life meet individuals outside of the state? Networking, and that is what I'm going to highlight today. What is networking? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? I am not talking about linking computers together kind of networking. No, I'm talking about networking as the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. I'm talking about expanding our circle of acquisitions. Think of networking like pouring a cup of water on a dry surface like a tabletop. The objective is to douse the entire surface with the water in the cup, so the entire tabletop should be wet in the end. However, the amount of water is dependent on the different amount of water sources we know. The more water sources we know, the more water that will be in our cup. Now, some water sources may provide a little water, some may ask for water in return, and some may fill the cup beyond its filling. However, in this example, the cup would almost certainly remain empty if we knew no water sources at all. Our water sources are a personal and professional contact list. Now, our network is made up of these people we interact with, which includes family, friends, colleagues, classmates, clients, customers, community members, a whole lot of C's in there. Even social media contacts who we may rarely communicate with are part of our network. Unbeknownst to many, our personal professional networks are quite vast, and their expansion could be unlimited if we are willing to expand it. But why? Why would you want to expand your network? Networking has immense importance in various life scenarios. It can help find opportunities in various fields of work, increase awareness of community trends, develop relationships with future people, companies, or businesses. Professional connections in our line of work have huge benefits. Personally, I have benefited from collaborating with various organizations that has led to my own personal and professional growth. Through networking, I have found myself presenting at national healthcare conferences, elected president-elect to the board of directors at the American Association of Physician Liaisons, Assembled Latino Employee Resource Group Consortium in Oregon, and none of this would have been possible without networking. We have discussed mentorship on this show before, someone who is willing to offer advice and guidance to help gain experience and in some cases, maturity. I can link my own personal and professional career development to many discussions with my own mentor. I personally believe career development is crucial in those looking to grow per... I personally believe career development is crucial in those looking to grow professionally, and networking is a valuable tool. Looking for a job? Gone are the days of picking up the phone or simply visiting a human resource department office with a paper application. I know I am dating myself here, But those were the old days. That is not how we seek job opportunities. Now, job opportunities come in various ways, some by hard work and getting recognized. Others are more serendipitous, meaning to discover something by chance. And that is why entrepreneurs should care. Networking increases the chance of serendipitous moments happening, the lightning in the bottle. But do not overdo it. Do not send out a thousand LinkedIn requests and say the shades of you, the podcast, said to grow our network. No, my friends, seek out network events and socialize. There are many virtual options to this as well. Interested in a specific company? Ask about their social calendar. Want to connect with classmates? Bookmark the dates of class reunions. Seeking more community alignment? The resources are at your fingertips. But don't take my word for it. Get out there and network and see how far we can go together. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Next 
podcast is a freelance digital marketer based in Portland, Oregon, with clients that include HBO, Travel Portland, Hatchery Foods, The Portland Japanese Garden, and many more. He is the creator of Hot Eats Cool Feats. Please welcome Jordan Curtis. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with Jordan Curtis, who really is is a social media influencer. And I, I follow this individual's page. Super cool, super local Portland, very food enthusiastic. So, Jordan, welcome to the show. Please introduce the world. Who is Jordan Curtis? Thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Um... You know, I got to start off as saying I, I, I uh, shy away from the influencer piece a lot. I've been, I, I work in social media and digital marketing. And so um, I, I, I'm excited to tell the story of um, my food Instagram page, Hot Eats Cool Feats. But uh, influencer is a, is a crazy <laughs> term. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that followed. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess I'll just start off at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, Southwest Portland, born and raised, Multnomah Village. Uh, went off to University of Oregon, got nice. a degree in sociology, um, which doesn't mean a ton. You know, I got a degree <laughs> and I could, I could write, I could write an essay or a paper, you know, um, came out of, uh, U of O with, uh, right around, um, when the crash happened, actually the, the housing crisis and the bottom of the job market. So I kind of drifted around for a little bit, um, Worked in a lot of, um, worked at Bridgeport Brewing Company oh, in nice. the Pearl District. Yeah, that's where I got into big time cooking. And that's where my love of food really started. Um, and then that was around the time as well when social media was really becoming a lot bigger yeah. outside of just Facebook. Uh, you know, I, I'm part of the generation where you had to have a dot .edu address oh, yeah. to get on Facebook. And um, so... That, that was around the time when the Facebook opened it up to everybody. You know, my mom jumped on Facebook, you know, <laughs> awful. Um, and yeah, and, and, and LinkedIn became more popular and Twitter, of course. And so I, uh, I got a, a few internships and then I finally landed in a, a really big internship at Edelman PR, which is a global PR agency, um, one of the bigger agencies here in town. And uh, I did um, about a year of traditional PR work. And then I, I, I jumped onto the digital team. I've been doing digital marketing ever since. Um, and now fast forward 12 years, I guess. Now I'm a freelance strategist and that's okay. really where my entrepreneurial journey began. And yeah, I've been doing that for a little over a year. I love it. I can't see myself going back to agency life or, you know, an in-house job. You know, the, the, the dream used to be to snag a job at Nike, you know, and now it's, now I want to build my business. So, I like it. Yeah. And what, what is your business called? So my business is called Line Leader Media. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm a freelance strategist. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people would call, you know, a lot of people that are freelancers start like their own agencies, right? Right. I don't have any dreams necessarily right now of starting an agency. Um, I have a, just a collection of friends and former colleagues that are in this business that I tap for help, you know, in a subcontractor kind of role. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, line leader media. Um, it's uh, the name is based off of my, my oldest daughter. Um, when she was very young at daycare, um, they used to take turns being, um, the line leader on the way to the park Mm. and she would come home every day, just like super happy or super upset if she, (laughs) if she was the line leader. And so we had to explain to her like, Hey, like, you need to be a good follower too. Yeah, you, know, you can't always yeah. be the leader. You can't always be the line leader. It's, it's just as important to be a good follower as it to be a good leader. And so that's kind of the the quick story of the name of our company. And and my wife is very very closely involved as well. She's um the, the bookkeeper and the kind of the business end of of everything. And so why why was the concept created? Why did you decide to you know say you know what I'm going to go ahead and do this entrepreneurial the you know kind of contractual work that you're doing. Right. That's a great question. It, it really had, I mean, I'm sure you're hearing this a lot and I'm sure this is the same for ever, a lot of people right now that have made big career changes, but it was really COVID related. I was working at a, a small boutique agency out of Seattle, but I was working remotely from Portland. I've been living this remote life for three years now. Um, so the work from home thing is something that I have been loving for a long time. And, and I knew that, um, 
some big contracts were coming up at my agency and some of them didn't get renewed. So I got laid off, but I had always had like side hustles for right. like a lot of people, you know, especially in the social media business. It's pretty easy to get side hustles. You can work and work and work and work. Yeah, and so, totally. so my wife and I had always talked about it and, you know, COVID really forced us into it and it's been amazing. I love it. And uh, so, yeah, I guess I would say we always had an eye to do this, but COVID really kind of pushed us into it. Right, so you're, you, you mentioned, you know, you're a freelancer in the digital world, right? right? How, how do you grow your business? Yeah, that's, that's, that was my main concern at the beginning. If I'm being honest with you, like, what can we, you know, to leave behind a steady paycheck, right? Yeah. And, yeah, definitely. you know, and, and even in agency life, clients are a revolving door. You know, one day you sign a big client, the next day you lose another client. And so my wife and I were very concerned, like, are we going to be able to keep a steady stream? Of, yeah. Especially of with the family. I'm sure that's yeah, even yeah. 10 times even more difficult. Oh yeah. Three kids, man. Like Ooh. I got to get paid, you know? So, um, but it has not, it is, that has been, um, just a, a, I don't know how to other to say just a shockingly great part of this. Like the opportunities for digital freelancers right now, especially in Portland are nuts. Like I have more opportunity than I could ever hope to like even work on. I get called. I, I have a call here in 30 minutes after I leave this podcast with a new a potential new client, you know? Love it. Yeah. So it, it, they really come through referrals. And they come through LinkedIn. I got a crazy LinkedIn story we can talk about here in a little bit. But yeah, I mean, the, the opportunity is out there. And, you know, I've been in this, I've been in this market for a while. It's, it, it certainly helps I was born and raised here. Yeah. Have to, oh, yeah. yeah. The network. It's, how, how important actually is that being born and raised here, being the, knowing your network, how, how important has that been to your success? Everything, man. Everything. I got my first, I got my internship at Edelman through a close family friend. She didn't get me the job, but she got me the interview. And I luckily nailed the interview, but everything that has come from that has been, um, I, I've really made it a point in my career to be someone who is like, people like working with me that, that, that's my personal brand. Like I would rather be, you love working with me than being like the best at what I do. Totally. And so, um, my network is everything. And, and luckily university of Oregon kind of, there's a big journalism school there. A lot of marketers come in and out of there and a lot of them move to Portland afterwards. So. The network is huge and it's been, um, it's been the key to my success for sure. So let's, let's hear this LinkedIn story. I yeah. got to hear it. <laughs> oh, this is the, I love this story. Okay. So, um, this was right really like maybe a month into freelancing. Um, there's a guy who I know from U of O. I don't really know him. His name's Anthony. Um, but he was, um, a recognizable guy around campus and he worked at Edelman for a little bit, but he worked at Edelman, um, New York. So I met him at, in the Portland office. Um, a lot of people come back um, that are from Portland that work at, in other Edelman offices. They'll come for the holidays and work from the Portland office. So you get to meet some like hometown people. It's just nice. fun. I met him once and, um, I, and I, he's very active on LinkedIn, like always posting, like super, super active. And um, I was always just liking his posts and kind of just, you know, keeping, keeping tabs on him because he's a digital strategist who's worked for some really big brands really big brands and really big budgets, like really cool work, like the like career goals, basically nice. like someone that nice. I look up to. And yeah. And I was just chilling in bed with my wife. It was like 10 PM. And I had noticed maybe like four months, five months earlier, he got a job at HBO. And I just, I commented on the, the post. I was like, this is great, man. Congrats. Like sounds awesome. You know? And he just LinkedIn messaged me and he was like, Hey man, like, how are you? I was like, good, man. How are you? <laughs> How's HBO? He's like, it's great. He's like, you're freelancing now, right? Like uh, freelancing, social media management, copywriting. I was like, yeah. He's like, I want to hire you. And like, poof, like I, I was working for HBO the next day and I got to work wow. on like just the cool, he, he works on a lot of titles in like the DC universe. So I was working on like the Titans TV show, the justice league, nice comic book stuff, like really cool stuff. And and, um, and you know, he was very happy to pay me up front for all my work and just cut, cut the check and, and do the work. And it, it was just this beautiful relationship. And, and it's been, a, a, it's been over a year now that he just, you know, he'll randomly pop. I, I don't have a retainer scope with him. It's more based on t different TV shows or different launches mm -hmm. or just, just random projects that he needs. And he'll just pop into my inbox and be like, Hey man, you want to work on justice league or you want to work on, <laughs> you know? 
Um, awesome. Yeah. So it was, it was awesome. And it just came from LinkedIn on yeah. a, at 10 PM on a Tuesday night. Networking like the, baby. It was, it was, it was amazing. And, and that's probably my shining example of just like the, the, um, the need for a good network and just being on top of things, even just, and, and he, I was just top of mind for him because I like his LinkedIn posts, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, cool. Just being active. Exactly right. So that's probably my coolest story. And, and, and some of the coolest work that I have done since, uh, since I've been a freelancer. Awesome. What, what, what would you say has, is hard about being a freelancer? What is hard? Uh, I mean, it's interesting. I think about this all the time. Like what are the pros and cons of what I'm doing? Yeah. And the pros greatly outweigh the cons. But I think more than anything, and I'm sure that a lot of people are going through this right now that aren't even freelancers, but just blending work and family, mm, you know? Yeah. Um, I saw a meme going around the other day. Uh, like I did, it was like, I didn't want to work a nine to five job. So I started my own business and now I work 24 like, <laughs> seven. It's, <laughs> it's very yeah, true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. And so I think that that's probably, um, probably the biggest con. Like I, I, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about work. The, the fact that I do digital marketing, which is totally on my phone, I could do almost everything that I do on my phone. Nice. It's, it's, it's easy to go from hanging out with my daughters to checking an email, then to check in their Instagram account, you know? So yeah. I, the, the balance is a difficult thing. Um, and like I said, the, the amount of opportunity that's available to me um, has been unbelievable. And so um, I've taken on a lot of work. And so, um, I, I, I'm, I'm blessed and stressed, I'd say. In blessed terms of, and stressed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the, the line is, is blurry for sure. Is Working. there anything that's been easy about it? I, you know, I, uh, that's a great question. I would say I do the same work as I always did for somebody else. Um, but I, but I get to, I get to trust my own instincts and I get to, you know, if I can do something better or more efficiently, I just get to do that. I don't have to ask. I don't have to, um, you know, run it by someone. And so yeah, um, I would say I like that part, the, the freedom to trust my own instincts and, and do the work that I think will be most beneficial to the clients. Um, it's up to me. So I like that. Yeah. In fact, you know, you kind of talked about LinkedIn and, and how that network started and that relationship started. You're working on Marvel and you're working on Justice League. Yeah. In fact, our relationship started on social media as well. I, I fall, as I mentioned, I followed your social media handle in particular, your one for your food. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. What is your social media channel? What does it do? Kind of what, how did you start that? For sure. I, thank you for asking that. Cause this is, this is a story that I'm super proud of. Um, I've always been really into food and not necessarily cooking. I like to go out to eat. I like going, I like, to, I, I like going out Let's to be real. I ain't cooking yeah. either. I mean, I cook, but I like to, I'd rather go out. I'd to eat, much rather you know go out to eat. Yeah. And, um, and I, I have always been really interested in food photography and I always, um, you know, I'm very tapped into the, I, I one of my, my clients off and on throughout my entire career, one of my current clients is travel Portland. Hmm. So I'm uh, that's one of my core clients right now. Nice. I love travel Portland. Yeah. I love that organization. Everybody yep. that works there, the work they do. Um, a lot of that is, you know, bringing people to Portland to eat. Very right? true. So, um, it's my job to stay on, um, stay on it. And thus I was, I've been following a lot of food influencers locally, um, with real followings, dude. Like I'm, I'm inching up at, to, to 4k right now. I got 200. Nice. Nice. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Um, and I, so I wanted to, I wanted to start a, a food Instagram page. Um, I started it in the pandemic cause I just wanted to stay creative. It was yeah. just really just a creative endeavor, but also it, so the, the, the page is called hot eats, cool feats. Um, and I've got one move on my, it, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's top down food shots with my, my shoes with the J's. Yeah. With the always J's with like the ones, always with the ones. I got mostly ones. Yeah. I got a couple other pairs, but they're almost all ones. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to do something a little bit different. I didn't want to have another just like food Instagram page. Totally. And, and so I thought that that would be a good way to do it. Um, and one of the other things that was important to me was. I didn't want to become a food influencer, but because I do a lot of influencer campaigns in my job, um, I wanted to see what, like, what would it take? You know, like, what are the ins and outs of like, if I was serious and I wanted to become a highly followed influencer around Portland food, you know, what do I have to do to do that? And so I've learned a lot along the way of just like, how do you, you know, score followers and how do you keep them engaged and how do you, um, you know, who else are your you know foodie friends and how do you stay connected with them? And so 
yeah, so Hottie's Cool Feats, it's um, I, it's about a year and a half in, and I love it, and it's something that really brings me a lot of joy in terms of just um, the editing process. I love just editing my photos. I like taking the photo and editing it and just being like, oh, my God, this one's going to go crazy is really fun for me. Um, I don't have any aspirations to, like, be a paid influencer or, like, you know, get thousands and thousands of followers. I'm, I'm happy with whatever. Right, um, right. but, but I've learned a lot and it's really fun. So let's, for the listeners at home, give them a little bit of nuggets of things that you have learned, you know, so some, maybe, maybe they're interested in starting their own photo, uh, Instagram thing. What, what are some advice that you can give them? For sure. For sure. I would say just like, try to try to make your photos as, as, as high quality as you can. You know, like I don't post anything. Um, I'm very particular about what I post. I don't like right now is a tough time of year because it gets so dark out. Mm. I post all like I, I shoot all in natural light. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I don't shoot any dinner right now. I'm shooting all my lunch stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I would just say focus on, you know, making, you know, posting the best photo you can. I use three different apps to, to, to edit my photos. Oh, wow. Snapseed is a great app. Okay. Um, one of the things I, that's, that's a big tip for anybody who yeah, yeah. drop some knowledge. Yeah, dude, they've got this thing called the, the healing tool, which is, you know, what is it? Photoshop is tough. Photoshop is so oh, man, I, complex. I, I have a love hate relationship with that thing. For sure. I've taken classes. <laughs> I still I, it's don't too get much, that. Man. I still don't get that shit. Man. It's so, it's so much, man. And so, um, but Snapseed is great because they have the healing tool. So you can kind of edit out like little you know, like bits here and there and make nice. clean, clean, clean up, especially a food plate, you know, sometimes that, you know, it gets a little sloppy, but like you can like, you know, <laughs> edit out a little sauce drop or something like that. Um, so Snapseed's a great app. Anybody who's listening, whoever wants a little tutorial of the healing tool, just hit me up and I'd be happy to show them. Um, Love it. Yeah. But a, another thing is the, the, the most important thing is to be active. It's not just posting your own stuff all the time, but like I comment on other people's photos I, you know, I share a lot of photos to my own stories, my Instagram stories. And it really is just, it's not like a, you can post a photo and you'll get followers every day. You have to be active. You have to engage with everybody else. And that's how you get people to find you. Um, that would be my, my biggest tip is just don't expect that like your, the followers are going to come. You have to go to them yeah. and, and engage with them. And hopefully what they'll do is be like, oh, who's this guy like commenting on my photo? Totally. You know? And then they go to my page and be like, oh, this is tight. And then they follow me, hopefully. And so, um, so yeah, that's how I've done it. And, you know, a lot of those insights come from my, my work, you know, yeah. in my career. Um, but I've also, like I've said, I've, I've, I've gained a lot of knowledge just trying it. One of the things that's crazy, dude, is um, these things called engagement pods. And I think it's probably big in any type of niche of influencer, especially on Instagram. Okay. But basically what people do is they organize into like DM groups. So there'll be like 20 people in a DM group. And everybody has a food page, right? So it'll be like, and they could be all around the world. You know, no one should really care too much about my food, my, my page, unless they're Portlanders or they like sneakers, even though my sneakers aren't even like, dude, I've learned so much about the sneaker culture. Like, it's a, it's a different world, crazy, man. Crazy. It's a different world. Um, so I mean, as a sneaker head, which I'm not, um, I've, I've, I've accrued some shoes for this page, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it they get into these pods. Bless you. Um, Thank and, you. And uh, and what you do is when you when you post something, you send your pick to the pod, and everybody jumps in and likes it and comments on it. And it's so inauthentic. Smart, yeah. smart, very organic way to kind of get boost your brand. It is and it isn't because right, those totally. people are all in it. I, I've been kicked out of engagement pods <laughs> because I didn't go and like someone's photo, like. Dang. It's serious, dude. It's serious. And it's so, like Mean Girls. Totally. I've been kicked Wednesday, out. We wear pink. And- <laughs> yeah. Wear pink or you're out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I did that for a couple months and I was just like, I can't keep up with all these people posting all the time and like me needing to go into their pictures and like comments like yum or comment like this looks so good when I, you know, it's just, it, it, it it is, it's organic, but it's not. Yeah. So I don't so, do that yeah. anymore. Yeah. I, I, I jumped out of that, but that was a bit, that's a big part of what foodies do to get more followers or make it look like they like have these really popular pages, Totally, but it's not. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. So one of the things you mentioned too, is you, you primarily focus on Portland. Why, why is that important? Well, I mean, with the pandemic, I haven't been really going anywhere. You know, I go to central Oregon a lot. I go to, you know, the coast. Um, 
And, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm happily, you know, go to eat other places. But like I said, I've got three kids. I don't travel as much as yeah. I like to. But um, I did just go to Kansas City, Missouri for a Chiefs game. I saw that. Yeah. You know, I think we must have just missed each other, in fact. Oh, oh were you there? I was I was out there the week before. The oh. in-laws live out there. Nice. And uh, my, my father-in-law actually has season tickets to the Chiefs. Did you go? To, did you go? I got to watch them beat the Cowboys, and it was oh, glorious. Baby. Except I hate the Chiefs. Oh, you do? Go Raiders, baby. Oh, okay. Uh, go, go Raiders, you. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first NFL game, man. Oh, and, and, and yeah. the food out there is amazing. Oh, man, yeah. So I'm, I'm in the middle of Kansas City Barbecue Week. I, I got about six pretty solid shots while I was there. Like I said, I'm picky. Like, I wasn't posting. I didn't grab any, like, hottie school. I got one move, and if I can't get a good, <laughs> you know, if I can't get a good shot because it's dark, like, it's not, it's got, not going to my page. So, but no, I loved it. It was super fun. That's probably... I went there and then, um, yeah, then everything else is pretty Oregon, Seattle, you know, where I go for work. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not purposely focused on Portland, but, um, I do really love food carts and, 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 and counter service restaurants. Nice. So I go and, and I typically go when my kids are napping. So oh. when, when napping's done, I don't have to share it's food either. tough. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they don't, they're not trying to eat what I'm eating anyway, but no, it's really fun, man. I love it. Nice. So what, what advice would you have for individuals that are possibly coming up and, and, you know, wanting to do, get into the food industry or get into a foodie kind of social media handle? Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I would just be like, you know, keep your eyes on your phone and engage with those people. Start, don't be afraid to start your page, you know, have low expectations of yourself. Just start the page and try to post cool stuff. And, and, and again, like, I'm not really taking this anywhere. Like I've gotten a couple free sandwiches, you know, but not really, <laughs> you know, and even if they, someone does offer me, you know, like a food cart will DM me and be like, yo, we'd love to come by. Yeah. We'd love for you to come by. We'll give you a free sandwich. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to take your free sandwich. Like I'll pay for that sandwich. Totally, you know? yeah. Like I'm, support I'm them. yeah, I'm lucky that I I'm able to eat out so much yeah. for this page. And so, um, so yeah, my, my advice is just have fun with it. Like, chat food people or love to talk about food so talk to dm someone and talk to them about food and be like yo have you been here yet or you know i love chatting with people about food that's a lot of what i do for travel portland actually um in my in my career is um we have this thing that we used to call the twisitor center it's kind of like a um, you know t- tweet us and we'll t- give you some recommendations on what oh, to smart, do smart yeah, yeah but it's mostly on instagram now and um so i i chat with people that are coming to portland or visiting portland or even locals on you know, they'll ask me, you know, what's my favorite ramen spot? And, you know, I, I'm a, the, one of the official tour guides of Portland in that way, digitally speaking. And it's just, it's, I, I love that part about my job. I love talking to be, people about food. And so if you're looking to get into food, you know, talk to people about food, like, you know, be enthusiastic about it. Yeah. You know? In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you about some food because I think we have travel Portland here Yeah. for the folks at home. We, what are the, if, Let's best burgers. Where, where's like, Ooh. give us some like top five best burger spots in the Oregon spot they can go to. That's the one of the tougher ones for me. I like I, burgers, but I, I don't love burgers. Oh. I, don't, I don't crave burgers. What, what, what is your food? I love all Asian food. Oh, I, interesting. I, I, a ton of noodles, ton of dumplings. Okay. I love street tacos. I, I hit uh, as many taco trucks as I now can. Now you're talking. Okay. Let's, sure. let's first let's do start, tacos. Let's do tacos. Yeah. So there's some, I, and it, I don't think that anybody can truly be an expert in Portland tacos because yeah. they are absolutely everywhere. Yeah. But there's some great carts. Um, dude, the one down here right by the Chevron down the street on Multnomah. Oh, yeah. I used to live right. So that little spot right yeah. there where they, they put in the Mucho Scratches right next to it. I used to live right in that spot. Okay, nice. That um, little taqueria right there. Yeah. Dude, oh. that bomb. You, yeah. you know, it's good when it opens up like at 6 p.m. Right. And it closes at 6 a.m. Right. right. There's a place like that on Canyon Boulevard, right up by all the uh, the um, the car dealerships. Anyways, I, a lot of these places, yep. I don't really know where they are. So there's one in Beaverton um, called La Morieta, I believe. That's okay. how, and and that, they just have a really good pastor. Um, mm. I've, I've hit them all, man. I, yeah. I, I, lo- I love pastor. I love carnitas. I'm not a burrito guy. I do. Oh, okay. I, like, I like tacos. Like tacos. I like tacos. And I like hella onions and I like hella cilantro. <laughs> and if they have avocado salsa, I'm that, about hey, it. Yeah, I'm, you know? I'm about that too. I'll For take sure. that. Um, the the birria, birria yep. trend, that's, that I guess, that, how long has that been around? Really? Yeah, for a while. Yeah, but you know what's kind of here. funny? My wife just made some vidya here at the house. Yeah. And she like made it for the first time a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, 
when did we start making this? I don't yeah. know, you can make it more often because this is just delicious. Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. They're, I mean, I'm all, all about oh, yeah. those. Tacos. I, I eat those wherever they have them. Yep. There's a great place in, I mean, I'm a Southwest guy. Yeah. You know? So I, yep. I, I hit a lot of Beaverton spots, you know, out towards Aloha, ton of, ton of carts, ton of taco trucks. And it's what's up, man. I yeah. love it. Um, one place in Portland that I really think is great that has a few different locations is Tight Tacos. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? Tight Tacos, I would love to get you guys on the show. I see you guys often. They're they're big on the social channels. Yeah. Same with JoJo's. Yeah. I, I absolutely love JoJo's social media channel. I just cannot stop laughing at some of their posts. The best. They, you guys do a phenomenal job. <laughs> yeah, dude, hit him up. I bet he would come on here, man. <laughs> they're great. I will. I he's, will. He's got a new location opening up in the Pearl soon. Oh, nice. So that's a good that's kind a of perfect time. time. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Kind of get some promotion going. He's a, that's a great example of setting your brand apart on social media. Yeah. And, oh, and, yeah. Big time. Yeah. I've like, I don't know who their social media manager is. I'm like, Dude. it's him. Oh, is it? I'm pretty sure it's the owner. Oh, I'm like, man, yeah. can you please come run my, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's, he's, great. he's got a, a really cool strategy Yes, it, of just like making fun of like the everything. world and everything. Like, but then, you know, the next post you get is just insane sick chicken sandwich that you true yeah yep i i'm a huge fan of that guy and 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 um and 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 then thai tacos those are true entrepreneurs yeah like they yeah. they started at a at a real small truck in in uh, right off hawthorne i believe or belmont and now they have a couple locations and and they have a beautiful social media feed yep they know what they're doing yeah yep. you, i would I'm for sure yep. listen to that that's yeah. that's what i love about this community you know it's like every time a guest comes on they kind of leave me with some more leads for other guests. Yeah. Like, sweet. That's Let's great. do it. So, yeah. so for the folks at home that are interested in learning more about you, maybe following your food. Yeah. How, how can they do that? Well, I, you know, my, my food Instagram page is hotties cool feats. I'm pretty active there. My, my regular just personal feed is Jordan with 11 O's. It's like <laughs> Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. my, that's my personal feed. I love yeah. it how you made sure it's, a, it's 11 O's. Yeah, is, yeah. Was there any meaning between for the 11? This this dude in high school who was kind of like a bully, like just always like, hey, Jordan. <laughs> it was just like, I, I thought it was funny, but I was also like, dude. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I just got it off that. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, like yeah. It. So, and then I'm on LinkedIn, man. I'm not pretty, I'm not very active on LinkedIn. I don't. LinkedIn's funny, dude. I mean, I would love to hear your thoughts on LinkedIn because one of my clients the other day, he called it just an, it, it, LinkedIn is an orgy of congratulations. Oh, wow. That's a great, yeah, that's a great, what is it? Cinnamon? Trade, trade, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's what he said. And it's true. It's like you go on there, it's like, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. No. I think it's great when people go on there and flex, like yeah. do it. Like where, you know, that talk about your work, talk about your achievements. I, I love I love it when when my colleagues and friends I see what they're doing and they're doing these big projects or they're working on these cool clients or they got a new baller job. Yeah. I love that. And I love hearing about it. And um so yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I love to connect and just chat with people, you know, especially digital strategists out yeah. there or anybody who's thinking about going out on their own. I mean, I never thought I was going to do this. Like yeah. the fact that I'm on this podcast right now, dude, is crazy to me because I don't even it's hard for me to even think of myself as an entrepreneur. But I, I guess I am, you know, yeah. I am. You're a sole proprietor. I, I mean, am. You're out there making your own business. It's crazy. And it's, up, yeah. And, and, and I truly, you know, there is, I did see this as a path, mm -hmm. but I never really thought it would be what it is. And mm -hmm. I've truly been very, very, in, in a year, I've been really successful. It's weird to say that, you know, it's weird to say like I'm a successful entrepreneur because I don't want to like flex that, but it's true. But at the same time, it's like, I am so lucky. I, I'm only successful because of the people that trust me and hire me, you know, yeah. it would be real easy to like have to go find another, you know, in-house job or another agency job. But I got people, you know, knocking on my door and emailing me and being like, yo, you want to work on this? And so yeah. I'm, I, I owe all my success to, to my network. Yeah. I truly do. And, um, so yeah, I love to talk to people about, about that. I love it. Um, and, and, and just get real honest with them about what my experience, I mean, that's why I love, that's why I'm glad, glad to be here on this podcast, to be honest with you, because I can talk about how grateful I am and, and, and truly um, you can do it. You know, I, I believe, I believe that people can do it. You if know, they, you know, one of the things, one of the things you mentioned too, is, you know, um, you're, you're going to have those successful moments as an entrepreneur and it's okay to be cheer yourself on, yeah. you know, Mary Oliver actually had this poem that is called the journey. Uh, one of my old mentors actually gave it to me and it's a great, great 
you know, for those individuals that have come into success, because what sometimes happens, you know, there is that old saying is your, your biggest supporter is someone you never met. And your biggest hater is someone you've already know for sure. Right. And so, and you, and that kind of tends to happen, right. When you kind of get to a little bit of success, you, you see people start to kind of dig into it. They don't want you to be that successful, but it's okay to, yeah, it's okay to flex. I mean, I, 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 all the time, of (laughs) course, I, I just never also want to be, I never want to be seen as an arrogant person. That's something that it really turns me off. Arrogant people really turn me off and, and I never want to come off as arrogant. Um, and, and also, I guess, you know, it's like, what do you do when like all your dreams come true? Right. Like, what yeah. do you, you know, it's like, I guess now that the, I feel like, and the, I guess if I'm being honest, this is what I'm struggling with right now is like the pressure's on to maintain, you know, my family and I have enjoyed like a, such great success in the last year. It's like, now I got to keep this train rolling. Yeah. You know, I think a lot about how do I scale oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. How do, and, and, and what do I need to do to, you know, make more money, yep. but not work harder. You yeah. know, like, yeah. cause I have, th- it's important for me to be a father yep. just as much as it is to be a provider. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a lot of what I'm thinking about right now is, and especially with the new year coming up is, you know, like what, what, what changes do I need to make or what, you know, what maybe could I let go of yeah. so that I have better opportunities or who can I hire that I trust? It's a tricky thing right now, man, because it's like, um, my reputation is always on the line and anybody, I, I don't see myself like hiring, you know, a ton of people, Yeah, but yeah. maybe, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. So it's, it's a lot to think about. And if, if any of it is listening that has experience of going from like something like a, just a sole proprietor to like, wow, I like, I now I really have like an agency or a business. Like I'd love to hear from them, like what that was like. And, yeah. and, and cause that's such a bigger step than just being like, okay, I'm going to be a freelancer now. Yeah. You know, yes. I thought that was a huge step, but there's more to come. And, and I would love to hear from them about like, what, you know, their experience on that. Yes. So folks at home, you hear that my boy, Jordan Curtis <laughs> over here is very much interested in networking. Jordan, sure. thank you so much. The owner of line lead media. I, I, this is an awesome conversation. Awesome. man. So excited for you in the future. I know there's a lot more things to come. Thank you for tuning in to the shades of entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.